How should a writer begin a movie? A writer should begin a movie with an event that captures your attention. Um, it could be something audacious. It could be with a car exploding. It could be with uh, an interaction between two people that is a major interaction for their relationship. Um, it, could, it's, it needs to start with something that upends the world of the character that you're following. And I think from there, everything sort of goes smoothly from there if you start with that. I'm thinking of, of an older movie, um, Sunset Boulevard, and how the movie is essentially bookended by the same thing happening. But you, mm -hmm. you see the consequence, you see the ending in the beginning. And mm -hmm. then I find that very interesting because then you're piecing together. Well, how did, how did this happen? I mean, you yeah. know, the screenwriter seems so nice. Like, what, what happened? Who was it, you know? And right, right. Yeah, I mean, so many movies are like that. You know, you start a film with a murder, and then it's like, okay, that's important. But now we get to see how it all came together and why it happened. Yep. Right. And so what about the use of too much conflict in the beginning? Or, or is there no such thing? Honestly, I don't think there is such a thing as too much conflict. Um, I think there can be conflict that takes away from the main storyline. That's something. Um, but I think in general, the more you have characters with opposing worldviews and opposing goals, I think the stronger the film becomes. Um, and that was something that was something I learned after Rising Star. My, my two lead characters, they had one major difference of opinion and that sort of drove the film, but there wasn't enough. There needed to be more. And that, that was something, like when I got into CSUN, I, I could see it in my own writing. And the stuff that I wrote after that, I really made it a point from the very beginning, there needs to be something, you know, that's, that's talked about and, or that's seen, you know, between characters where there's problems because the problems are, are where the conflict come from and the story is where the conflict, uh, the, the story is ultimately what comes from that conflict. It's how we, they deal with it. We see that too in uh, documentaries, don't we? Where there's, there's kind of like a conflict or, or there, there's the tension of kind of what happened in the very beginning of the film and then it yeah. goes back. Oh, very, yeah, very common. Yep. Which part of the screenwriting process is most difficult for you? I think the revisions are the hardest part for me. Um, I've generally been pretty good at being able to write a first draft of something um, because of my background as a journalist. I'm, I'm used to just kind of spitting out thoughts and just kind of getting them out very quickly. Um, so I can write a first draft usually with, pretty quickly. It's when you finish that draft and you have that moment of, oh my God, this is so great. I just finished this. And then that thought turns into, but you know this needs to get fixed. And going back over and finding the moments that don't work and introducing theme and you know strengthening supporting characters and things like that and making every character integral to the storyline and cutting characters that you don't need. All of those things are tough for me because now the way that I write, I try to outline as much as I can before I start so when I have that first draft, I think, well, this is actually really a second or third draft because I did all this outlining work. So this must be much closer to finishing, you know, than it would be. And then I read it and then I realize it's not. And really kind of bearing down and, and doing that really fine work of, you know, cutting the, the sentence of dialogue that you don't need, um, you know, finding a way to get rid of the widow. So you, you have one line of action instead of two, you know, those, those kinds of things. That takes me a lot of time. Um, so I think that would be the, the hardest thing for me. Do you, do you do the whole, like, put it in a drawer for a month, you know, the cliche, put it away for a month or no? Sometimes. Um, it depends on the story. Like, I have, I have one script. I've been working on it for, gosh, I think seven years now. And I'll write a draft. I'll put it away. I'll go do something else. I'll come back to it. I think I'm on draft eight right now. And it's taken a long time and it's it's changed quite a bit from what it originally was and i think it's still going to change because i started writing it so far before i went to school now i look at it and i say okay now there's some really big things i can change in this that would make it a lot better so 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes, sometimes I put it away for a little bit, and sometimes I put it away for a really long time. <laughs> it sounds like that script means a lot to you. Um, or it's just something. It's it's something that I know if I do it right, could really help me in my career. So for that particular script, I want to make sure that when the world sees it, it's as good as it can possibly be. Because every time I've pitched it, people love the idea. Literally every single time. I have yet to have a negative reaction to this. So my response to that is, okay, I'm going to sit on this and I'm going to make sure that when it does go out into the world, it's ready and it's, there's not a word out of place. So there's still a ways to go before I get to that. But... It's, it's getting there. In your mind, Marty, what's the purpose of story? I think story exists to remind people that we're not alone. Um, I, every time I see a film that really connects with me, I, I always think that, okay, someone else is dealing with something similar to what I am, um, or someone's thought, you know, a way about life the same way that I have. Um, you know, story is, is a way to build community. Uh, and that's something that connects not only to the, the film that you watch, but also the way that you make it. You know, so much of, of indie filmmaking now is, is about community building. Um, but in terms of, you know, the story itself, it's, it's a way for people to, to realize that they're, in a lot of ways we're all the same. Do you think that's why it's a richer experience seeing it in a theater? I think so. I, in, in certain ways. Um, I think, I think you get more out of seeing uh, like a real good drama or a real good comedy with an audience. Um, well, actually, let me rephrase that. Yeah, I think, I think seeing a film in a theater is a really powerful way to connect with that community. Like I still remember in 1999, I think, when There's Something About Mary came out. I was living in Florida and I went to go see that in the theater. And to this day, I have never laughed so hard in a movie. And part of it was because everybody else was laughing just as hard. So that was just an amazing experience. Um, when the South Park movie came out, I think it was that same year or the year before. I remember that there were people standing up and cheering, you know, <laughs> at parts of that film. Like it was, it was just really, it was hilarious and it was it was cathartic, you know, for everybody that was in there, just a chance to really have a good laugh. Um, yeah, you know, and you can, it carries all the way to this day. I saw a film called The Farewell uh, last week at the Alamo Draft House. And that film was just a beautiful story uh, about a Chinese family and how the American member of that family has to go over to China uh, and deal with a, a family problem there. And it was, even though it was about a Chinese family, it was universal because the drama within the family is something that so many people know. And in that experience, being in that theater, and it was a packed theater, it was great. Like the moments of pathos were strong, the moments of humor were strong. And at the end of the film, you know, people were talking about it. Like I was talking with the folks that we were sitting next to and, you know, have never met them before. And, you know, here we are with the shared experience, you know. It, it's something, you know, uh, the Netflixes and Amazons of the world are going to be here forever. Um, but there is still something really special about seeing a film in a theater. There really is. And it's nice when you can just turn to the person next to you afterward and just, or, or even just seeing the sort of the demeanor of people leaving the theater. Mm -hmm. You know, because there is in LA, it is tough with like, there's this whole new cell phone etiquette that a lot of people just don't sort of regard so there's yeah. that part but once that's all over and everybody kind of puts the phone away hopefully yep. then then you know we get to this part where you can really see is it affecting people and it's interesting when you're laughing at a part that other people aren't sometimes i wonder yeah. are they just restraining themselves or you hear sort of moments of shock there's been films and i won't go into them what they are because they're very political hmm. but where you can tell you can see the outrage just by a gasp from, from someone. But you know what? That's another part of the experience. You know, the, the community aspect doesn't always have to be positive. I, I saw uh, when Fahrenheit 9-11 came out, I saw that in the theater and people broke out into yelling matches after the fight was done. Wow. And to me, that was wonderful because 
yes, it's stressful because obviously people with, with different beliefs are going to be very vocal about them. And thankfully, it didn't devolve into an actual physical altercation. But that, that's the power of movies. That's the power of cinema is to, to get people emotionally engaged. And whether you're all on the same side or if you're on different sides, it's the engagement that's the most important thing. Um, and so obviously I'm on one side of that for that particular film. Um, and there were folks that I was supportive of in that yelling match. But you know, the fact that we were involved, that's why that film was made, was to generate discussion, was to, to generate, not controversy, but although of course it had it, but you know, get people talking. And so that film did its job you know, in that particular screening. So, and I think, I think that's what filmmakers should shoot for is that level of engagement, you know, in whatever form, whether it's communal or whether it's in the moment divisive, I think either one is, is totally valid. Where was this? This was, uh, this was in Connecticut. Huh? Yeah. And this was after the screening? Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Did, did, just curious, we'll move on, but did security or ushers have to come in? There were folks watching, but like no one you know, no one actually threw a punch or anything like that. So there was, it just sort of, it happened. They yelled and then everyone just kind of went their separate ways. So to me, and I know a lot of people won't say this, but I look at that as a positive because everybody gets a chance to kind of get their views out and, you know, it makes people a little uncomfortable for the moment, but do you want that or do you want people sitting and stewing, you know? Right, and the one I'm thinking of, which was more recent, I usually like to clap after films, and I'm always amazed when people don't, but um, no one wanted to clap after this film, so I was mm. like, I think maybe I'll just keep my, my clapping to myself. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be outnumbered here, so. Yeah. 